Wah! Wah! This game's too hard. It needs an easy mode. Is what I would probably say if I was a gaming journalist. Now, I'm not here to spark that old debate off again, but I'd heard secretive rumours that there actually was a hidden easy mode buried deep in Dark Souls Remastered. A mode so powerful that you could beat the game by simply staring at the bosses until they died. Don't believe me? Believe this. Look at me, sure. And the boss. I simply had to find out more, so it was time to head out on a quest to break the game apart and dig through its putrid insides in search of ultimate power and the answer to the question. Can you unlock Dark Souls Remastered's hidden easy mode? I started up the game, as I do at the beginning of every playthrough. Gave myself green hair so I could look like the Joker because that's edgy. Chose Thief as my starter class to get a free backstage pass. Picked the black firebombs as my gift and woke up in a prison cell feeling rougher than a sandpaper fleshlight. You know, just the usual. So, how do you kill the Asylum Demon just by looking at him? Well, the simple answer is, you don't kill him at all. Enter the arena with your firebombs equipped and use him for target practice. Five bombs is enough to kill him, so as the fifth one hits him, quit out of the game before you get the victory message and reload. Ah, look who's back. Ignore the naked Trump demon for now and run to Oscar for your freshly squeezed OJ. Sadly, he appears to be a little concussed, and in his confusion he gives you the big pilgrim's key, so drop by to say what's up to Asylum Demon again, and get the hell out of there. Later, sweet cheeks. The Chromobile dropped me off in Laudron, Crestfallen said some miserable shit to me, I don't know, I wasn't listening, right? And it was time to start making plans, because nobody said easy mode would actually be easy. I would need to assemble a crew, and I would need to gather supplies. Firstly, I looted everything worth grabbing from around Firelink, before heading down to the Valley of the Drakes, picking up the soul on the way, and making my way back up through Darkroot to Andre. Well, hello there, you big greasy hunk of man muscle. I crushed some souls between my puny fingers, bought the repair box, and spent the rest on wooden arrows because... reasons. On my way back to Firelink, I stopped off to grab the keys, get some parry practice, and free Latrek. Sadly, he turned out to be a bad tipper, so I was forced to spot and kick him into Blight Town for his rudeness. I'll take that ring though. Cheers. Up to the Berg next, where I made light work of the enemies in the way. Mmm, right in the dick. And paid a visit to the undead merchant to buy the residence key and more wooden arrows. Again, reasons. It was time to start assembling my crew, and sometimes you just need to take a leap of faith. Run and jump off these stairs over the railing, land on the stone wall, and down again. Woohoo! Welcome to the lower bug, motherfucker! Now, do it again, but this time don't be a dum dum and quit out to de aggro all the enemies. Better. Believe it or not, this dripping tissue of a man was needed for my crew so I freed him for some business to be concluded at a later date, grabbed his swag, and then carefully picked off all the enemies to open up the sewer shortcut back to the shrine. Crew member number two was hiding out all the way in Darkroot, so I returned to the basin, making sure to max out on wooden arrows from Loverboy on the way. The Hydra can be a massive pain in the neck here, so you want to run to the base of the ladder, bait out an attack, and use the cooldown window to scooch up the ladder. Prayer probably helps at this point, or feet pick donations to Miyazaki himself. I made it to the top, barely alive, ran past the gank squad like an absolute coward because there was no way I was doing that shit again, and went to speak to crew member number two, Croco Cat. Alvina asked me some sort of question I totally didn't understand, so I took a stab in the dark and picked an answer which seemed to be the right one because she let me into her noob fucker covenant and now everyone was my new best friend. Yay!
there's no better way to celebrate new friendships than a crazy shopping spree. Sadly, I was broke, so I would need to tap up the bank for a small loan. And by that, I actually mean... Totally break the game. Take the biggest soul you've picked up so far and use change order to place it directly below your Estus flask. Tab across to your arrows, choose drop on the wooden arrows, change it to 999, exit out of that menu without selecting anything, tab across to the system menu and down to brightness, and then hit X and R1 straight afterwards. If you time it right, you'll end up with two menus on top of each other like this. Go down, select OK, go down to quick game, select it, change this number to 999 and hit OK. Alright Dark Souls, what the fuck? Small disclaimer, this sequence of inputs only works on PS and Xbox editions of Dark Souls Remastered. If you're on PC, the glitch still works, but the inputs are different, so... I don't know, look them up or something. I'm just a console peasant. Anyway, did somebody say shopping? I bought all the useful stuff from Andre, as well as Magic Weapon and the Lingering Dragon Crest Ring from Wet Paper Bagman, and it was time to start levelling. I was determined to spend my illegally obtained souls sensibly, so I gave myself 27 strength as an absolute must, 40 endurance because I planned on doing a lot of running, 10 vit because health is for scrubs but I like round numbers, 25 int, and then dump the rest into the most useful stat in the game. Down to Lovely Town next for a quick word with our new bestie Shiva, who sold me the most essential item for this run, the Stone Greatsword. Costs 15k, upgrades with Twinkling Titanite, and needs 40 strength to wield, which means you can two-hand it with 27 strength. Cheers pal, see you again never. Finally, I returned to familiar surroundings, stocked up on repair powders from the undead merchant like they were going out of fashion, and bought a copy of the Force Miracle from Bowlhead. Perfect. Unfortunately, a dumbass whose name I will not mention forgot that they needed 12 faith to cast Force, and I, uh, I mean they, only had 11. Fuck it. Time to rob the bank again. This time, I put a little into attunement for more spell slots, which I'd also forgotten to do, bumped up faith to 12, and dumped the rest into resistance because fuck you, that's why. At long last, it was time for me to break the game even more comprehensively than I had done already. So, this is how this little trick works. Equip magic weapon in your first spell slot and force in the second one. Leave your first weapon slot empty and put the stone greatsword in the second one. Finally, equip a talisman and make sure you're wearing the lingering dragon crest ring. Find a small ledge or set of stairs you can drop off of. The ideal height here is somewhere between waist and neck height. Stand on the edge, like the edgelord you probably are, and try to cast magic weapon onto your bare fist with the talisman. Nothing happens, because that's not how this game works. Duh! While your character is doing the failed casting animation, quickly swap your spell from magic weapon to force, swap your bare hand to the stone greatsword, step off the ledge as soon as you regain control of your character, and cast force as soon as you land. It probably helps if you change your controller grip to do this, that way it feels like someone else is doing it for you. If you do it wrong, then don't be surprised, because this is one of the most annoying glitches to pull off that I've ever tried, as you'll see later. But if you do do it right, instead of casting force, your character will buff their unbuffable sword with magic weapon. Now you've got yourself a big blue shiny lollipop of silent death. Very cool, thanks Baron, but why did you do that exactly? Well. Let me demonstrate using my willing assistant. Two hand the sword, press R2, and watch as the waves of unholy pain destroy your feeble victim's whimpering health bar. I am become death, destroyer of worlds. Sadly, the damage output was actually kinda trash, so it was more like I am become mild irritation, tickler of health bars. So, how do weapon buffs actually scale in Dark Souls? It's nerd time, folks. The key stat here is your Catalyst or Talisman's magic adjustment stat. 
which in turn scales with either int for most catalysts or faith for most talismans. Magic Weapon applies a flat buff of 0.8 times your magic adjustment. With 12 faith, my talisman's magic adjustment was a meager 115. However, the sorcerer's staff I picked up earlier has a magic adjustment value of 170 with 25 int. A much better looking number. And although the spell swap glitch works easiest by casting force with a talisman, it's also perfectly possible to pull it off with a catalyst. So I bought a copy of Soul Arrow from Griggs, attuned it instead of force, swapped my talisman for my staff, and it was time for the first boss of the run. So you can wake up again now. I headed up the stairs towards the first bell, said channel this dickhead to the channeler and his crew of miscreants, and prepared myself. These stairs at the bottom of the ladder work perfectly for casting the glitch. Yep. Uh-huh. Just like that. Nearly. Mm-hmm. Once I'd nailed it, it was running time. Weapon buffs last 60 seconds normally, but with Lingering Dragon Crest you can extend the duration of sorcery buffs to 1 minute 30. That means you have limited time to reach the boss and do your thing. Oh yeah, and each R2 of the sword takes one quarter of its durability, so you get a max of four casts without repair powders. No pressure then. Anyway, things went a little like this. Easy peasy deadly magic squeezy. With bell number one firmly wrong, I refused Oswald's offer of a free hug and returned to the shrine for a bacon sandwich and a glass of warm milk. Quaylag time next, but I had some other business I wanted to get out of the way first. So I did my perfect impression of an egg and returned to the asylum to grab the doll and the ring. Tweedledum and Tweedledee could wait for now, because I had me a hot spider gal to gently caress with my aura of doom. I made the most of the stone sword to clear my path through Blight Town, where the swamp did its best to try and stop me, but failed, because fuck you, I've got resistance. After some experimentation, I found this branch outside Quaylag's hole, ooh, uh, down to the left, where I could cast the glitch with a lot of persistence, and it was time to crack open the lube. This went about as well as most things in my miserable existence do. The damage tick from the buffed aura was far too low for me to be able to take Quaylag out before time ran out, even with the use of repair powders for extra casts. So I went back to the bonfire to re-strategize and do that funky leg thing people do. My first thought was to try increasing my magic adjustment to see how that would affect things. So I took another quick trip to the central bank of Glitchville bumped my int up to 46, because that would set my magic adjustment to 220, which is a nice clean number, and dumped the rest into faith for later use. Round 2 with old hairy thighs was definitely an improvement on the first attempt, but the damage was still more of a mild head cold than a deadly plague. Now, before you scream so hard at your screen that it cracks, I know that multiple casts of the weapon effect actually stack the damage buff now, but I only figured this out at a later point in the run, so for now, I needed another way to speed things up. I headed back to Andre's bonfire and prepared myself for quite the journey. This one's a classic. Take out two of the three hollows outside the church and lure the third one back down the stairs. Make sure you've got your bare fist equipped and parry and repost him next to the third pillar up from the bottom of the stairs. Ignore your funky camera angle for now and finish him off with some R1 spam. Congrats, you've now entered one of those old Micro Machines games with the terrible controls. All you gotta do is figure out your way down to the bonfire room and out to the walkway. Then, it's a simple case of walking to the end and in between the large columns. Like I said, simple. Not rage inducing in the slightest. As soon as you get the prompt that you've entered sends, quit out and reload your game to fix the camera. Nice. 
I carefully hacked my way through Squid Game Dark Souls Edition to reach the top of the fortress, making sure to free crew member number three along the way. A talking hat with a man growing out of it. I couldn't use the bonfire here, as I'd need to be able to homeward bone back to Andre later, so it was golem time I guess. There wasn't anywhere suitable anywhere near the boss fog for me to pull off the spell swap glitch sadly, but all I said earlier was that easy mode lets you beat the game by just looking at the bosses. It doesn't specify how they die, and there's nothing in the rules about not summoning an absolute god of destruction and letting them do all the work for you. You good over there, mate? Need a hand? Nah? Okay, don't mind me. I'll just be chilling over here, yeah? With the big lad deader than Cyberpunk's release, I let the strange pigeons carry me to An Orlando, resisted the temptation of the bonfire, that's what all those points in resistance do for you, I guess. Carefully picked my way through the rafters, cut down the great magic weapon spell, grabbed it from down below, and homeward boned out of there ASAP to the comfort of the parish. With my newly acquired weapon buff, I was feeling far more confident about my third date with Quaylag, and this time I wasn't planning to blow my load early. Great Magic Weapon gives you a buff of 1.1 times your magic adjustment, a distinct improvement on before. I cast the glitch, stepped through the fog, and proceeded to eat her health bar quicker than I'd eat her, even despite the fact that I'd forgotten to repair the sword and had to resort to some mid-battle DIY. Sweet dreams, spider tits. I rang the second bell, watched the cutscene. Thanks for opening the gate, I guess? Pretended to care about Engie's stupid fucking egg cult and triggered the start of the ceaseless fight in preparation for later, before running back through the funhouse and all the way to An Orlando. My power was growing, but in order to truly tap into its potential, I would need to defeat Jabba the Hutt and Princess Leia first. I attempted to vaporise the archer just to humiliate his hollow ass but he robbed me of my only joy in life by yeeting himself into the void, so I took revenge on his cousin inside, hit the bonfire, did the stair skip, said hello to the BFG, cleared out the waiting room and prepared myself for pen and teller. These stairs here work just fine for this. Come on then, in and out, quick smash and grab, let's do this lads! Okay, so the main issue here was Ornstein. Ideally, I wanted to take him out with my first cast by sticking close to him, but he hops and zooms around so much that that proved harder to do than I'd anticipated. And by having to cast twice in phase one, I was making phase two harder for myself. What I really needed was to cover my body in strange red flames to make myself look scarier. So I returned home and made my way through the aqueduct, used these stairs to trigger the spell swap, cast before walking through the fog and watch Crapper Demon and his diseased pets dissolve into atoms before my very eyes. Then I freed Laurentius from the depths and blackmailed him with compromising photos of him and the Butcher to force him to give me a pyro flame. Finally, I held my breath and ran back through Stinky Hollow Turd Town to grab power within. Armed with the power of flame, I stepped into the boss room again and Ornstein shit his pants quicker than you can say Miss, Ornstein just shit his pants. This made the big electric potato very sad, but he too was no real match for my power anymore. Finally, after an incredible amount of fucking around, I was starting to actually feel like a god. Could this be easy mode? Oh, my sweet summer child. The reward for beating Carrot and Turnip is one of the best in the game. This elevator. It's so smooth. Oh, yeah, you get to talk to this chick too and admire her beautiful curtains. Now I had the Lord Vessel, it was surely just a matter of blitzing through the other bosses and killing the old man, right? Well, yes, but also no. I popped back to Firelink to say hi to Benedict Cumberbatch and place the Lord Vessel and then headed into the archives to let Seath have his way with me. Mmm, curse me harder, tentacle daddy. Not for the first time in my life, I woke up in a prison cell, 
DJ Snake dropped some absolute bangers for the pretty ladies in the crowd. And like the old man that I am, I said, turn that bloody music off. And then made my daring escape, opened up the archives, freed small body Logan, and bought up as many of his spells as I could afford, including my final sorcery buff upgrade, Crystal Magic Weapon, which does a whopping 1.4 times magic adjustment of damage. I would say that Seath is the perfect subject to test it out on, but that would be a blatant lie. I found this spot to glitch off on the middle island above the Crystal Lizards, but not only did it take me a total of 1 minute and 14 seconds from the point of casting the glitch to reach Seath, break the crystal, approach him and cast, which left me 16 seconds to kill him in. I should also mention that he's hugely resistant to magic. Boo hoo. I knew something he definitely isn't resistant to, but I'd need to take a wild and wondrous journey to obtain it. Spoopy Town first, and I worked my way down through the catacombs to Vanos' bonfire, making sure to grab the Dark Moon Ring en route, and definitely didn't get parried by a skeleton at any point. That would be sad. Pinwheel wasn't even worthy of my godly walk of death, so I just summoned Leroy and wandered around aimlessly for a while waiting for him to do his thing. Oh, there he goes. Good lad. After grabbing the Tomb of the Giants bonfire for later use, I stopped off at Sens to pick up the Gold Serpent Ring, and then it was painting time, baby! This place is cold. I probably should have brought a coat. Better. I cleared the place out, got boned by the bone wheels, and farmed the pretty bird ladies until I got a souvenir of reprisal. Now, I just had to repeat the process nine more times and... Just kidding, that'd be way too straightforward. I used these stairs over here to lube up my love stick and went to give Priscilla a warm hug of pain. After which, it was time to get the hell out of there before the cops showed up. So, I did my best Assassin's Creed impression and returned to Anor Londo. That's right, nerds. It's nerd time again. I opened up my glitch wallet once more and visited the giant blacksmith to spend it all on exactly 610 giant armors. This took a while. Why the fuck would I do that exactly? Well, your character actually has an inventory weight limit. It's 10,000 in case you cared. 610 armors at 16.4 weight each equals 10,004, so this is guaranteed to max out your weight limit. It also costs 4.88 million souls, so make sure you brought your big boy pants. The inventory weight limit doesn't apply to buying from vendors. So, buy one Cestus... Cestus? From Andre, drop it on the floor and try and pick it up again. Ha ha, you can't. Weakling. Drop a bunch of giant armors. The exact number doesn't matter, but probably around 20 or so. Pick the Cestus back up. Congratulations! You now have 126 Cestus Cestus Cestuses. Talk to Andre, go into the purchase menu, navigate to the Cestus and select it, but don't press OK or cancel. Close out of the menu. Move the souvenir of reprisal to the top of your inventory. Do the same brightness glitch as the Souls Duke to get to the double menu. Press X, down, right and X again, and you should get a drop item menu. Push down to get a negative quantity. Select OK and come back out to find that you now have 99 souvenirs of reprisal for god knows what reason. I'll take it. Since I'd already broken the game so much, I did one more money run and set both Faith and Int to 50 in preparation for the end game, and I was all set. Looking back over my footage, I have no idea why, but I decided to go and kill, um, I mean, give belly rubs, to Sif before moving on. You can activate the glitch from this small ledge near the boss arena. It's a bit finicky, but not too bad to pull off. I powered up, triggered the cutscene, and got to work on everyone's favourite wolf. One good thing about killing her this way is you don't have to suffer through watching her limp at the end of the fight. Good night, sweet papa. With that out of the way, I returned to Anor Londo, opened up Gwyndol Ding Dong's magic wall, joined the Darkmoon Covenant, 
handed in 10 souvenirs of reprisal to get Darkmoon Blade and the Talisman, and then handed in the rest, because what the fuck else was I going to do with them? Make them into a necklace? As much as I would have loved to kill Gwindo with his own spell for the sake of irony, the length of miracle buffs isn't affected by the lingering dragon crest ring, and one minute isn't long enough to cast the glitch, run to the boss room, and reach Gwendolyn before the buff runs out. So, I stuck with my old friend Sorcery. You can pull off the glitch from the top of the circular stairs. This took me a while to figure out the precise positioning. You pretty much have to be exactly where I am in this footage for it to work. With it activated, the fight itself posed no problems. Just dodge everything and cast. Couple of goes does the trick. Cheers for the sunlight blades, snake hips. Now I had tamed the power of lightning, I could finally finish off business with Seath. Sadly, the spot I had originally used for the glitch was a rip, as it was too far away. So I spent around an hour and a half testing different spots with no joy, only to finally try this crystal just outside the fog gate as a last resort, thinking, there's no way it would work, and... Oh, would you look at that? Time to melt Seath like a snowman in the Sahara. More like Seath the Helpless, am I right? Off to the ruins next. But first, I had some unfinished business, so I brought up the rest of Logan's spells and then thanked him by brutally slaughtering him. Welcome to Dark Souls, bitch. The main reason I did this was to obtain the Tin Crystallization Catalyst, which halves your spell casts, but has the highest magic adjust of any catalyst. Then, I headed towards the Demon Ruins for some fiery fun. I glitched off the end of the walkway near Ceaseless, and then ran in and made him cry for his mummy. A quick reminder that I'd already activated this fight earlier. This was to avoid me having to run all the way to the end of the arena to kill him. Demon Fire Sage next, so I used the stairs just outside the boss fog to buff up and made light work of the big flaming fatty. At this point, I had enough humanities to open the Isolith shortcut, so it was on to everyone's favourite boss, the Bitch of Chaos. This branch at the bottom of the stairs just before the boss fog worked just fine for activating the buff. I ran to the first orb with no problems. Well, maybe one small problem. Casting the R2 attack, there's absolutely nothing to the orbs. Well, shit. I had to get medieval on its ass, quit out of the game to reset myself outside the fog gate, repeated the process for the second orb, and then it was fun time. BRB, just gonna go die a few thousand times. Fuck you, and I'll see you tomorrow! Thank God the buff actually works in the final phase. Oh, Nito. Oh, Nito, Nito, Nito. I cleared out his reception area, quit out to despawn the babies, sadly this doesn't work in real life, and prepared myself. This was where I almost rage quit the run. Well, the first place I almost rage quit the run, at least. The issue isn't Nito, it's finding a viable spot to activate the glitch. I am not exaggerating when I say I spent over 6 hours trying out different ledges to get this to work. The problem is that all the edges in this area are sloped, so you kind of slide off them rather than falling, which seems to mess the spell swap up. Not only that, but any spot that involves falling into the water also means you're going to keep spawning in the baby skellies. Not gonna lie, they are hella cute though. Just when I was beginning to really regret my decision to commit to this run, I finally found a spot that worked, and believe me when I say you have to stand in exactly this spot for it to work. The Rave Lord himself was easy pickings in comparison, since casting the buff will also demolish all his bony cronies. So I sent him back to the ether without casting a sweat, and decided I would hit up the DLC before heading on to Four Kings and Gwyneth. This will definitely go without a hitch. I 
I pew-pewed the Hydra, rescued Dusk, procured the Pendant, got a lovely handjob from Manus, and immediately ran into a pretty big problem. There is nowhere to cast the spell swap glitch before Sanctuary Guardian. Big F, rip DLC, etc. As the DLC is all optional content anyway, it wouldn't stand in my way of achieving my original goal of beating the game by just looking at the bosses until they died. But I was curious, so I soul speared Kitty to death and pushed on regardless. You know what they say about curiosity and cats though, right? Arty first up, so you can spell swap off the steps by the boss fog, put some power within you, enjoy the cutscene, or don't, and let's go! Okay, this is going rather well. I sure hope I don't get stuck and almost rage quit again. After unlocking all the remaining bonfires in Ulusil, using Hidden Body to help me through some of the hairier areas, it was Calamite time. So I asked Goff to make me a tasty giant bat shish kebab. He duly obliged. I buffed up with Sunlight Blade off this rock just outside the boss fog. A floaty fool works best here. Stuffed myself full of power within and... Yeah, this didn't go well. First off, if Kala does anything other than a swipe to begin the fight, it's pretty much a rip from the start. Calamite has extremely high resistances to all kinds of magic damage, even lightning, so you can't waste any time at all. If he flies or swoops, you're fucked, to use a technical term. If he hits you and you have to recover or chug, you're also fucked. Here's the thing though, even if you do get good RNG, at 50 faith, Sunlight Blade just couldn't bring him down fast enough. I had the perfect RNG on this attempt, and stayed on his ass the whole time, and the buff still ran out before I could kill him. Sag. Oh well, I guess it was off to the land of the huge manatees to fight the hugest manatee of them all. But first, I had to make sure I freed Sif. So long, sweet prince. I'll see you in the future, which is actually the past for me, and we can do... Belly rubs? Who's a good girl? Manus is a big stinky poo-poo head. There you go, that's my video title. This is pretty much a greatest hits compilation of all the problems I'd faced so far. You can trigger the spell swap from this edge here, but not only do you have to stand in exactly the right spot, even when I did, I would manage to successfully activate the glitch maybe once in every 100 attempts, if that. In almost 7 hours of experimentation and attempts, I actually got to face Manus precisely 6 times. And not only is he hugely resistant to the damage buff, but he also spends so much time comboing and leaping around that finding time to recast with the sword is nigh on impossible unless you get the perfect RNG. Which I didn't. Finally, I came to a decision. I pulled the curtains open, went for a walk in this weird place called Outside, where I saw a bird for the first time in three years, and I reached an epiphany. Fuck. This. I'd been filming for so long at this point, I just wanted to actually complete the original goal I'd set myself. If you want to see a much better Souls player than me kill Calamite and Manus with this method, watch Ray Dimitri's All Bosses Tranquil Walk of Death video, because I had me some kings to kill. Precisely two, actually, because four kings is just a blatant lie. I made sure to clear out all the dark growths on the way to the boss fog, even Mr. Sneaky Fuck hiding around the corner here, and used these stairs just outside the room before the boss to spell swap. Notice the floaty fall here. My first plan was to use Dark Moon Blade to finish the fight at the first king. The Tranquil Walk of Death keeps on damaging the overall king's health bar, even during the first king's death animation. 
so you can get pretty damn close to killing them. Just not close enough. And the buff runs out before the second king spawns in. I decided to switch back to the old faithful crystal magic weapon instead, and put lingering dragon crest back on to give me the extra buff time. This method does less damage to the first king, but gives you enough time to wait for the second king to spawn in and finish off the fight. Yeah, ah, dickhead. Where are your bros now, eh? Oh my god, it's almost over. I had a few bits of unfinished business though, and I'm sure you're all desperate for a musical montage, so... Have one. Definitely nothing bad happened in those clips. I don't know what you mean. With the housework done, I made a tasty bowl of Lord Soul soup, opened up the kiln, cleared out all the black knights, and used this ledge to trigger the glitch. You want to drop off at around waist height here for it to work. Now run, you beautiful beast. Run like the wind. No, seriously, it takes over 30 seconds to reach the fog gate, so you better get cracking, lad. Through the fog, Wait a couple of secs, cast, dodge the first attack, and walk round him. He's an old man, so he gets confused easily. Bless him. As Gwyn returned to nature like dust in a breeze, I breathed a sigh of relief, linked the fire like an absolute casual, watched myself burn because it's the only fate I deserve at this point, and it was all over. So, what had I learned from all of this? Well, one thing mainly. The real easy mode was a strength build all along. We happy. As usual, guys, thank you so much for... No, look, fuck it. I'm not leaving things like this. I reloaded a cloud save from before the end game, power level to 99 faith, and actually gave myself some HP so I could tank some hits without worrying about healing. And here we go. I don't even care if it's messy. It's done. Go on. Go home. Shoo.